All right, here we are for a general introduction to moral philosophy or ethics. So we um, encounter uh, morality every day, probably, right? Just about everybody, except for pe perhaps maybe psychopaths, uh, which we might talk a little bit about later on in the semester, have moral feelings, beliefs, and attitudes. We all make implicit and explicit value judgments about right and wrong, good and bad <clears throat> conduct or character, and what matters, um, what we value, right? Uh, we all confront questions and must make decisions about how to conduct ourselves, how to treat other people in our everyday lives. These things concern justice, fairness, uh, you know, e equality, freedom, um, and, help, and when we have to help others or if we have to help others. Um, we also confront conflicts of interest and matters of professional conduct in our work lives. Or if you're a student, um, once you end up in a profession, you will likely encounter some of those issues. Uh, you probably encounter issues of character and conduct, even at your, uh, if you have a job now, and, and maybe even if it's not like a professional job, but like a, you know, a service industry job or something like that. You know, my tattoo artist has to worry about, you know, whether or not uh, he should tattoo certain things or not, right? So we all confront uh, questions of value and morality or ethics uh, in our professional lives and in our work lives. Uh, we also confront questions about value and justice and fair treatment, um, power, abuses of power, right, uh, in regard to our social and political life as well. So, for example, during the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, the general counsel at the university that I work um, came out against mandating vaccines, and he, he, you know, said that the COVID pandemic has caused every state school in this country to evaluate the age-old question: When is government interference with a liberty, uh, with a liberty interest, justified? Well, that's a that's a philosophical question at the heart of of moral and political philosophy, right then, right there. Where is it? Where, if ever, is government? Um, justified in li limiting the liberty of individual people. So moral philosophy, right? Um, we, let's just start with philosophy in general here. If you uh, pinned me down and asked me what philosophy is, I would tell you that it's the well-reasoned inquiry into an attempt to address the fundamental questions of the human condition. And among those questions, central to those questions, which are typically conceptual questions, um, are questions concerning the nature of morality or ethics. And then here's a little bit more of a technical definition of philosophy from a textbook that I've used often. It's called Classic Questions in Contemporary Film, An Introduction to Moral Philosophy. It's by Dean Klosowski. And in there, he gives a kind of technical definition of philosophy that works pretty well for academic philosophy. Um, that definition is the intellectual activity of attempting to discern and remove contradictions among non-empirical reason to beliefs that have universal importance with the resulting benefit of achieving a greater understanding of the world and our place within it. And again, among those conceptual or non-empirical questions are questions concerning um, value and whether those values are universal or relative. And um, if so, what's the difference, right? And learning about those and, and trying to support those, you know, central to philosophy is supporting beliefs about those sorts of things with well-reasoned arguments. It's not just a matter of expressing an opinion. It's a matter of um, informing oneself about the available evidence and constructing a well-reasoned argument to support that position. And so there are some basic areas or subfields of academic philosophy. These, this include logic the study of proper reasoning, or the principles of proper, proper reasoning, epistemology, or the theory of knowledge, metaphysics, or the study of the nature of reality and existence, um, and then moral and political philosophy, epistemology, logic, and metaphysics kind of cut across the other areas of philosophy, of philosophy because whether it's aesthetics and we're worried about beauty, or um, uh, whether AI is actually conscious or not. What we're worried about is how we would know those things, what's the reality of those things, and what arguments support various views about those sorts of topics. And then moral philosophy in particular here, since that's what we're going to be focused on. 
It's the subfield of academic philosophy focused on questions concerning the nature and content of morality and ethics. And again, these are typically, and philosophically, they're non-empirical or conceptual questions as opposed to merely empirical questions. It's very easy to figure out how many people believe murder is wrong or how many people think abortion is permissible under some circumstances but not on others. We just go count them up and, and poll those people, right? But the philosophical questions typically be non-empirical or, or normative or meta-ethical about the nature of those beliefs and whether they're objective or subjective, are they well-reasoned, are they justified, and so forth. And so we get some further divisions uh, within further subfields within moral philosophy. That includes meta-ethics, so that deals with the epistemological and meta, uh, metaphysical issues regarding morality. Do we have genuine moral knowledge or is it all just moral opinion? Are there any uh, universal uh, moral truths, right? Do, do such things exist? And if so, how, what's the nature of that existence? Um, those are all meta-ethical questions. The question of why be moral or is it always rational to be moral? Um, also a meta-ethical question. Then we have normative ethical theory. These are theories that focus on identifying and defending some standard of right conduct or good living. Uh, like the golden rule is an example of a normative principle or a normative standard, a prescriptive standard, not just a descriptive standard. And then norm applied ethics is about applying, as the label suggests there very strongly, applying different normative standards to particular moral problems like abortion, stem cell research, animal welfare, affirmative action, uh, mandating vaccines, right? Those sorts of things. So uh, here's another definition from a, a book by Louis Pogeman um, called Discovering Right and Wrong. It's an example of an introductory textbook on moral philosophy. And there he says, the central purpose of moral philosophy is to secure valid principles of conduct and values that can be instrumental in guiding human actions and producing good character. So again, we're worried about um, values but we're, and, and guiding character, but we're also worried about, you know, having well-reasoned and well-argued views about those sorts of things. So then we get to meta-ethics, a little bit more about that. Again, it's the focus, uh, it focuses on the study of epistemic and metaphysical questions concerning the nature of knowledge. So is genuine moral knowledge possible? Here are two basic uh, two other basic meta-ethical debates, the problem of objectivity or universality in ethics. Again, are there any objective or universal moral truths? Or is morality just relative to the individual, the culture, society? Um, sometimes you'll see that discussed in terms of the realist, anti-realist debate or the debate over moral realism versus moral relativism. There's also the problem of moral motivation. You know, why be moral? Is it always rational to be moral? What justifies being moral or justifies morality? as such. So, you know, like I just, just mentioned, this semester we'll, we'll look at the challenge of moral relativism, and so we'll consider claims like this. Uh, there are no universal moral truths, therefore everyone ought to uh, be tolerant of cultural differences regarding morality. So, you know, um, on the face of it, we might wonder whether, uh, philosophically, you might wonder whether that's a coherent position. If there are no universals, why is it that everyone ought to be tolerant? So, We'll um, worry about what arguments, how to formulate moral relativism and what arguments um, might support or count against the truth of moral relativism versus, again, moral universalism, the contrary position. So when I talk about an argument, here's what I have in mind. Uh, it, this is actually a formal argument. Um, some philosophers will call this proper form. It's where it's laid out with the premises leading down to the conclusion, stated succinctly and as clearly but as completely as possible. Um, so if there's widespread disagreement between cultures over what is morally prohibited, permissible, or obligatory, uh, then there are no universal moral truths. There is such widespread disagreement over those sorts of things, so therefore there are no universal moral truths. So that's uh, an argument for relativism there. Again, we'll be worried about whether uh, we'll be worried about things like whether that argument contains any errors of fact, fallacy, or self-contradiction. If you don't know what those things are yet, don't worry about because we're either we're probably going to do a little bit of logic um, to help prepare you for those sorts of things. If you're watching this video in conjunction with my introduction to philosophy class, we've already covered those sorts of things. And then normative ethical theory, again, focusing on identifying and defending some normative or prescriptive standard, 
not a descriptive claim, but a prescriptive claim about right conduct and good living. So some basic questions in normative ethical theory include what ought I do uh, or how should I live? And then what standard should I evaluate those things by? And then questions like, is there a single true morality, right? Is, is one moral theory true versus all the other possible theories? So for example, normative ethical questions, um, what makes something morally wrong? Is it the maxim uh, or intentions of the actions, the motivation for the action? Is it the consequences of the action? Or is it the character trait of the person performing the action? There's a, a basic question in normative ethics. You know, what, what should moral theories emphasize when evaluating conduct and character? Should it be the motivations or the maxims, the consequences or the character traits? Uh, and so we'll consider various approaches to normative ethics, different moral theories that propose different standards and look at the, um, the implications of those standards, uh, consider them in regard to some hypotheticals, as well as to some more concrete uh, moral questions, and then what arguments help support or um, detract from the truth of those standards. And again, let's give an example of that kind of standard again with the golden rule. Most of you probably have heard of the golden rule before. Well, it, that's a... One, one way to approach normative ethics, it says to treat others as you would want to treat them. Um, you, you know, so if I don't like being randomly punched in the face, it's prohibited for me to randomly punch people or impermissible for me to randomly punch other people in the face. Um, but how should we really understand or interpret the golden rule? Um, should I understand that as prescribing me to treat others is uh, is if I was in their shoes with their preferences or if I was in their shoes with um, my own preferences, right? So there's an interpretive question about how to understand the, the golden rule precisely. What arguments support the truth of falsity of that golden rule? Why should we accept that rule as a guide for conduct versus some other normative standard like the greatest happiness principle, self-interest, or the categorical imperative. Again, if you don't know what those other things are yet, that's fine. That's what we're going to learn about in this class. And then some key ideas in normative ethics. So again, I've just kind of been using these terms uh, somewhat already. The difference between a descriptive claim and a prescriptive or normative claim when philosophers talk about norms uh, in the context of ethics, they typically do not mean a statistical norm. They mean a prescriptive norm or that's expressing a value judgment. We, we want to know what norms can help us distinguish between permissible, optional, uh, actions, impermissible or prohibited actions, and our obligations versus actions that might be good to do but are above and beyond what I'm required to do, supererogatory acts. We need to worry about the differences between virtues and vices, different kinds of character traits, and the different kinds of values that, um, that we both, we value and um, that are central to these moral theories. So, you know, philosophers will talk about the distinction between intrinsic values, things that are valuable in and of themselves, versus things that just have use value. You probably think, for example, that you as a living being, a, probably a rational being, um, have intrinsic value and shouldn't be used as a mere means by other people, right? So we'll also talk about the differences between uh, teleological versus non-teleological theories, consequentialist versus deontological theories, act-based theories versus character-based theories, and different criteria for moral standing or consideration. What kinds of, of properties does a thing have to have in order for it to be a member of the moral community, such that I have a moral subject, such that I have to worry about how I treat it? Um, right? Is it, is it rationality? Is it just the, the, the capacity to experience pleasure and pain? Uh, what exactly is that criteria? And then uh, there's applied ethics. Applied ethics, we won't do a whole lot of in this class. Um, we're going to primarily focus on uh, meta-ethical issues and normative ethical issues, but applied ethics is just applying nor different normative standards to particular uh, moral problems that you've probably heard of, like abortion, stem cell research, euthanasia, um, you know, AI ethics has become a hot thing, obviously, recently, um, animal welfare, all these sorts of things are issues in applied ethics. And so what do utilitarianism or the golden rule or virtue ethics imply about the permissibility of things like abortion or um, letting AI make decisions that impact humanity in some way, right? 
What rights, if any, do animals have? Is it morally wrong to disregard animal welfare? Is health care a moral right or some kind of privilege? Right? These are all questions in applied ethics. This course, uh, as I just mentioned, is primarily going to focus on meta-ethics and normative ethical theory, but we'll talk a little bit about, um, in, in the context of especially normative ethics, we'll talk a little bit about some issues in applied ethics just to help illustrate the similarities and differences between those different normative standards or the different implications of those standards for questions about morality. And so that's a basic uh, kind of introduction to what we'll be doing in this course or in this section of um, the class.